Why don't we build a perfect home in Earth's orbit? Peace and quiet and zero natural disasters. Or place this huge Dyson hemisphere near the sun and take our solar system's future into our own hands. Finally, what about a mega generator that draws infinite energy from a tamed black hole? All these space megastructure projects may seem to offer unique opportunities to us people. However, in this video, I'll tell you why is reshaping Earth not a very good idea? How can we make a black hole even more dangerous? And what real space megastructure projects can turn out to be mega graves for humankind? What megastructures would scientists like to use as a people's permanent residency, whatever risks it entails? In the mid-50s, American architect Buckminster Fuller patented a geodesic dome, an ideal futuristic accommodation. Soon after that, he came up with the Cloud9 project. This is a sphere one kilometer in diameter, the minimal size an object must have to be called a megastructure. And however unbelievable it sounds, the sphere is supposed to float in the atmosphere like a hot air balloon. Fuller calculated that to make this possible, the air inside a cloud nine must be just one degree hotter than the outside air. And then hundreds of residents of lightweight aluminum penthouses would be able to enjoy constantly changing views from their windows while chewing avocado toasts. Fuller dreamed of building a really perfect city of the future from these cloud nines. NASA picked up the idea and offered to start a cloud colony project on V. Venus. Here comes trouble. It'll be incredibly hard to keep the Cloud Nines aloft. On Venus, that's a one-way ticket to acidic hell. And on Earth, a Cloud Nine can be blown away by strong upslope winds, and then it'll meet the same fate as airships. In the 70s, physicist Gerard O'Neill concluded that habitable megastructures should be better located outside the planet's atmosphere. An O'Neill cylinder orbiting Earth is just 500 meters in diameter, but can carry 10,000 residents. It spins at two rotations per minute, and artificial gravity pins people to the walls. Forests, rivers, farms, we can build a perfect world from scratch instead of spending centuries on the terraforming of Mars. Sounds great. We'll take 10, please. Although cosmic rays can spoil the party, in only a couple of years, the dwellers of the luxurious cylinder will receive a lethal dose of radiation since there won't be the atmosphere of Earth to protect them anymore. And it would take only one single raging meteor to turn this megastructure into a mega grave. But there exist even more large-scale projects whose authors don't seem to care much about safety issues. What crazy megastructures could transform Earth into a death trap for humans? At the turn of the 21st century, Swiss architect Christian Waldvogel decided to rebuild our entire planet. His super project, Globus Cassis, urges us to almost turn Earth inside out and smear everything it has over a giant sphere. Waldvogel described the process in detail, from building space elevators and inward curving window domes to transporting Earth's mantle and crust to orbit. At the same time, gravity would gradually switch from the Earth's core to the spinning outer envelope, much like the O'Neill cylinder. Sunlight, in turn, would be entering through the large windows. Humans would have to find some temporary accommodation until the construction is finished. But when the time comes, we'll have a new home to move into, and it'll be seven times bigger than our previous one. Land areas with everything we need for a comfortable life will be 40 times larger, so we'll have a chance to forever forget about territorial disputes in this handmade Garden of Eden. Although, let's not forget that there's hardly ever been any construction work that didn't take someone's life. Imagine that this tower crane is a thousand kilometers long and that it drops your hometown, destroying a few other cities in addition. A typical day at a Globus Cass construction site. 
But even this mega project pales in comparison to a massive habitable disk designed by Dan Alderson in the mid-70s. It won't be clever to joke about a flat Earth here because this megastructure will replace all terrestrial planets at once. An Alderson disk is more than 240 million kilometers in diameter, and it extends beyond the orbit of Mars. What's more, its thickness reaches 5,000 kilometers. Actually, the habitable part of the disk will be only a narrow strip in the middle, but even this area will be 50 million times the size of Earth. According to Alderson's idea, this will be a perfect home for trillions of people. However, never forget to read the fine print when purchasing real estate. Since the sun will always be located on the same side, an Alderson disk will be shrouded in eternal twilight. You won't be able to walk on a flat surface because you'll always be pulled sideways. I guess we'll have to ask mountain goats to train us in rock climbing. But even these inconveniences won't last too long. Gravity will inevitably turn any odd-shaped object back into a good old sphere. An Alderson disk will be heavier than the sun, and these objects will undoubtedly merge into a new bright star. And all the trillions of people will also be its fuel. But even this star won't be left out. Resourceful engineers with vivid imaginations can definitely find something bigger to install on it. How dangerous are megastructures built around the Sun? Right now, our solar system is speeding in orbit around a galactic nucleus at 250 kilometers per second. It feels like we're sitting inside a race car with no steering wheel. What if there's a crash waiting around the corner? I mean, colliding with another star or black hole. Leonid Shkadov, a Soviet engineer, wondered if there was a way to steer our solar system long ago. In the late 80s, he came up with an idea of a stellar engine. That's an arc-shaped mirror 300 million kilometers in diameter, which makes it a bit bigger than the Earth's orbit. Solar radiation bounces off the mirror in one direction and possibly moves the Sun together with all the planets. According to Shkadov's calculations, in just 200 million years, this engine will make our solar system drift 80 light years away. That'll be the biggest triumph of engineering that humankind has ever seen, although it's a moot point whether we live to celebrate it. If the Shkadov thruster suddenly decalibrates, its exhaust will roast Earth into a pile of ashes and dent our engineers' enormous egos. Matt Kaplan, a U.S. physicist, likes Shkadov's idea except for the part where Earth burns down. He's recently developed his mega installation just a few kilometers in size. It funnels hydrogen and helium from the sun and burns them in a thermonuclear reactor. The Kaplan thruster is attached to a star with the help of an electromagnetic anchor. The powerful exhaust will be fully controlled and it'll let the solar system accelerate to 30-odd kilometers per second and cover 50 light years in just a million year period. This beats Shkadov, I reckon. However, the Kaplan thruster has a weak spot too. The electromagnetic anchor I told you about. Even a minor glitch can mess things up, and then the installation will fall right onto the sun. A sudden energy shift will likely cause a large flare, and the sun will burn all the electronics on Earth. In this scenario, the only megastructures we'll be able to build afterward will be stone pyramids. So, let's better use the Kaplan thruster as transport and travel to a black hole to begin new construction, of course. What kind of insane and dangerous megastructures can we build near black holes? Black holes will be our only energy source when all the universe's stars fade out. But how can we transform an object that irrevocably swallows up even light into a power generator? Physicist Roger Penrose found a brilliant solution to this problem and was awarded the Nobel Prize for his research into black holes. To launch the Penrose process described in the early 70s, we'll need a rotating black hole. Its event horizon is surrounded by a gray region called the ergosphere. This area twists space-time around a black hole. 
It's possible to get out of there, though, and you'll even have a nice bonus. Penrose suggested launching a two-stage rocket into the ergosphere. The propellant falls to the event horizon and disappears for good. The remaining part of the rocket gets sped up by the excess energy produced by the rotating black hole and darts out of the ergosphere at a much greater speed than it previously moved at. To build the generator, we need to erect two stations near a black hole, each around a dozen kilometers long. The first station will be emitting light. The second one will be catching it. One blink of a flashlight on one side will give us a powerful laser on the other, thanks to the ergosphere that provides the speed increase. This way, we can drain energy from black holes for billions of years and support our thriving colonies. But to avoid even the slightest energy leak, we better quarter the black hole by two mirror arcs used in the Shkato thruster. The light inside this cage will be accelerating, then reflecting off the mirrors, accelerating again, and so on indefinitely. We only need to cream off this process at a certain point. However, it sounds simple only in theory, while in reality, unpredictable quantum effects near a black hole can turn our mega generator into a mega bomb. If we don't stop the chain reaction of photon acceleration, this megastructure will explode with the force of a supernova and blow to atoms everything it reaches within a radius of the entire solar system. Black holes approve it. Well, now I've got one last megastructure to show you, and this one is the most harmless. We can build it on the moon, and it will require only an elastic shell made of a large amount of durable material, a lot of air, and a powerful pump. A little patience, and you'll have an inflatable colony encircling our satellite. It would be 11,000 kilometers in length. Got a hole somewhere? A meteor ran into the wall. No problem. Just duct tape it. Would you like to live there?